Are you getting tired of consistently being told to invest for the long term in a low cost mutual fund or ETF that tracks the S&P 500 or a total market index and left thinking that's the best you can do? What if I told you that there's a better low cost stock market index you can passively invest in to get better returns than both the S&P 500 and the total market index? Would you want to know? Let's first take a look at company size versus return and risk. It shouldn't be any surprise that small cap stocks require taking on more risk to achieve that additional return. What about the middle? Mid cap stocks is what I'm talking about here, and they have historically offered more returns than large cap stocks. No surprise, but their returns are also larger than small cap stocks. What's even stranger is that the higher return doesn't come with more risk it actually comes with less. Taking a look at style investing, such as value versus growth, the value premium is exaggerated for mid cap and small cap stocks. It's well documented that value companies, stocks that have lower valuations compared to their peers, have outperformed growth stocks. In large caps, this outperformance is less than 1%. Still enough, though, that you'll see a lot of investment portfolios tilt towards value. But in mid and small cap stocks, the value premium is over 2%. Now, that may not sound like a lot to you, but over long periods of time, that definitely adds up to a whole lot more money. The best performing area of the U.S. market is tied between mid cap value and small cap value for the time period between 1976 through the end of 2015 and they outperform by a lot. The annualized returns, which takes inflation into account of the different investment style boxes, shows just how much higher the returns are for mid and small cap value stocks. Both mid and small cap value stocks have a value premium over large cap value of 2.7%. That is huge considering that you can get that kind of return with less risk. Let me show you how impactful that is. Hypothetically, if you invested $10,000 in large cap value, at the end of 40 years, you'd have a total of about $200,000 versus the mid and small cap value return over $542,000. That's a higher return simply by choosing mid or small cap value and with lower risk. Now let's take a look at the risk an investor had to take on to earn these returns. Let's first use the risk metric that everyone uses, volatility or the standard deviation of annual returns. The lower the volatility, the lower perceived risk of that investment. The green highlights the best performers with the least risk and the worst performers shown in orange have the most risk. The volatility table shows you the more traditional and accepted notion that value stocks can and are less risky than growth. This table is what most money managers refer to when recommending a tilt towards value, specifically a large value tilt. But we can't ignore mid and small cap value, especially when looking at a risk metric like downside risk and overall performance. Let's use downside risk instead of volatility. Using volatility to measure risk doesn't tell the full story. An investor cares more about how often they lost money and how big those losses were. Investors don't care about volatile years that are generating high returns turns like what we've seen in the stock of Tesla. For example, let's compare hypothetical Tesla stock returns of 60%, negative 10%, and 40% in a three-year period to the Apple stock that had negative 10%, 10%, and negative 10% in that same three-year period. Volatility will paint Apple stock as safer because its standard deviation in returns is equal to 9.4% compared to Tesla's 29.4%. But an investor would look at these two sets of returns and clearly prefer Apple stock because they lost less often. Make sense? The calculation I'm using to measure the risk adjusted return of these investments is called the Sortino ratio. This weights not only the severity of your losses, but also the frequency. And measuring the downside risk of these two stocks correctly tells us that Apple stock is less risky with a 5.8% downside risk compared to the 8.2% for Tesla stock. I bring this up so you have a better understanding of how risk-adjusted returns matter and how you can use them to make better investment decisions. If we look at the downside risk of the sector box, value stocks show their power. Just note, treasury bills are being used in this example as the risk-free rate of return for calculating downside risk. But surprisingly, we find that the mid-cap value is actually the least risky area of the market, followed by large-cap value, and very closely after, is the small cap value. When looking at these two investments, 
investment style boxes, you can see the logical decision would be to invest solely in mid cap value and small cap value stocks. They both exhibit across the board higher returns than US large caps of any kind, and they do it with about the same or lower risk, therefore getting better risk adjusted returns. Let's take a look at the annual returns by year for this period. On the right side of the table shows the trailing three year annualized return to give a cleaner comparison. The losing investment style box is highlighted in orange. The winning is highlighted in green for that trailing three year period. Mid cap value and mid cap blend are the only areas that never come in last for a three year period and they each, especially mid value, have a couple periods of outperformance. The returns include dividends and treasury bills, and in the first column, inflation is shown for reference. You'll see a few time periods that are highlighted. The first is the late 70s, which saw crazy inflation levels. You'll also notice that mid cap and small cap stocks were able to keep pace with inflation and even surpass it, whereas large cap stocks had trouble keeping up. The second time period of interest is the late 90s, the tech boom, and then the bust in the early 2000s. Mid cap value and small cap value trailed large cap growth in the late 90s, but still did pretty well. But their performance comes shining through in the early 2000s when they were making money where most investment style boxes were losing. And mid cap value had a crazy run in this time period, being the best investment style box up until 2007. Lastly is the financial crisis in 2008. Small cap value, mid cap value, and large cap value all lost money, but they lost the least in 2000. 2008. Curiously, mid cap value and small cap value lost money in 2007, but came roaring back in 2009 and 2010. Now let's get a little crazy and see if the last 40 years plus was just pure luck. What you see in this table is a comparison of these asset classes going all the way back to 1927 and the trailing 20 year annualized return is shown on the right hand side for comparison. I highlighted the winner in dark green and second place in light green. Look how often mid cap value and small cap value value either finishes first or second for the last 20 years. Now in that same light, take a look at the worst and second worst growth stocks dominate. This isn't some fluke in mid cap value and small cap value. They'll continue with their winning ways, unless of course the whole world comes to an end, then none of this will matter. Now let's focus on correlation. What you see here is the correlation between these asset classes over the last 40 years. The first interesting thing is that inflation has a higher correlation to mid cap and even higher correlation to small cap stocks. If inflation is scaring you, you wanna go small. This also shows that if you're not willing to go fully into mid cap and small cap value, they offer nice diversity to a portfolio of large cap US equities. The correlation is 0.77 and 0.66 to the S&P 500. Moving on to metrics, the table summarizes the return characteristics of the different US equity style boxes. On the bottom two rows, the Sharpe and Sortino ratios are shown in conditional colors orange and green. Both mid cap value and small cap value clearly shine when looking at risk adjusted returns. Another row shows the total return of a dollar in real terms after inflation. Just so you know, all metrics are based upon after inflation returns. Now, take a close look at annualized return, total return for the dollar, and the Sortino ratio. What sticks out to you the most? If you answered the risk adjusted returns, you would be right. Mid cap value and small cap value blows away the risk adjusted returns of all other investment style boxes. But for some reason, the average retail investor and even many professional investors don't know about the fantastic features of this area of the market. In my opinion, the mid cap value in small cap value space is one of the best kept secrets out there. There's a few ETFs that track these indexes that come with low or reasonable expense ratios, like the iShares S&P 400 mid cap value, symbol IJJ, iShares S&P 600 small cap value, symbol IJS, Vanguard mid cap value, symbol VOE, Vanguard small cap value, symbol VB. Are. And likely there's others you'll find elsewhere like Fidelity or Schwab. If you're still not convinced, take a look at this plot comparing mid cap value, small cap value, and the S&P 500. There's no denying that's impressive.